Yes, they don't want to have it be subverted and, and taken over by leftists who do <laughs> not represent the taxpayers. Yeah, well, the Canadian Jewish Congress, the last plenary of which I went to, you know, on behalf of our organization, the Alliance of Con Concerned Jewish Canadians, they wouldn't let us be registered as a delegate, even though all Jewish people are supposed to be. They wouldn't let us vote. And then when it came to the plenary session, they wouldn't let me speak because I was trying to speak because they, Bernie Farber wanted to dissolve the Canadian Jewish Congress in favor of the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, which was not elected. <laughs> so I posed it, but he wouldn't even let me talk. He no, even threatened no, 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 me not, with that, violence, you know, if I continued to talk. That's not right either. Yeah, I know. But there's violence on the left and on the right and on the left too. Yeah, and the Jewish, Jewish Marxists, they don't come here with me because they don't want to recognize the Jewish people. They're so simplistic, you know, they still sort of believe in Marx's pamphlet of 1848 on the Jewish question, which wrote that the fault of anti-Semitism is the Jewish people's own fault. <laughs> well, no, the, the Marxists, Karl Marx, actually that's also, a hip, uh, that's also an irony if you think about Karl Marx. Uh, um, you know that Karl Marx, I mean, he, 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 was, he was given a very generous salary for Max Engels. Yeah. Max Engels wasn't Jewish. No, was he Jewish? I'm not no, sure. no, no, he wasn't. He, he wasn't Jewish, but I know Karl Marx was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Max, he was raised Lutheran. But Max, but, but the joke about Max Engels is, did you know that Max Engels was a son, uh, a small brat, and he uh, was part owner of the Engels uh, conglomerate. He was a highly, it was a, he was a bit of an outcast, but he, because he, in the family, but they, they tolerated him because he inherited from his dad. He is the one who gave it to the Engels Corporation and made Marx live. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> and the Engels Corporation was a multi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, Marx, uh, he played on the stock market as well. <laughs> that I don't know. Did he? Yeah. His daughter objected. Yeah, I don't know if you ever heard of the Engels Corporation. No. It was a, it was a but. But Engels was a was a very good, you know, political theorist. He wrote, Max you know, Engel, of he on was. the history of the English but working he was class. The younger brother of the the, the, fa the Engels family. And the Engels family, they owned, the, they were billionaires. Yeah. They were very, very, very rich German family. They didn't know if they were Jewish or not. But the Engels, was, Eng British, British, right? no, British. Engels is their German. Engels, it was in Germany. Marx went with but Marx. Engels lived in England. Did he? Marx Engels, Marx Engels lived in England, but the Engels Marx was, uh, lived in Germany, of course. No, well, Marx lived in England. He was in London. Uh, Afterwards, but he, he he was German. Of course he was German. Yeah. And contrary to popular, the German democracy is a relatively democratic state, more democratic than uh, than even the British, uh, if you look at it. If you look at the World War I... Yes and no. Because a lot of people make a mistake and they think that Hitler was elected. He wasn't elected. No, no. He was appointed by Hindenburg. That, that's a different story. But if yeah. you look at if you look at Germany from 1871, Germany was never the yeah, German Empire was never really a true. It was more of a confederation of all kinds of kingdoms. Of each provinces, king, each, yeah. Each kingdom had its own own state. For example, Prussia was the least democratic yeah. in some ways, but in the other ways, no, because Pr Prussia had a three. In their Landtag, they had a three um, a system that Bismarck introduced, which Bismarck said was fair. They had what they call the three 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 sets of uh, uh, like three types of like three types of, of uh, voters, like three types of representatives. They had three candidates. The first one was the top one percent. They were allowed to elect one third, the people of the wealthiest. Then you had the next one was the middle class. They would also send one third. Oh. And then the, all the majority the, got a one third. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. That's that interesting. Was Prussia, yeah. and, and Bismarck introduced that because Bismarck said uh, it's only fair. Uh, it's only fair that the one percent <laughs> would have one third of the say. Otherwise, they'd lose everything, of course. No, because the one percent contribute more to German society. Well, there's other ways to compensate people for their contribution. No, but I mean, but uh, Hegel was the one who initially formulated Engel. the concept of, uh, of the German nation. And he thought it was just Prussia. He thought that all the rest were impure. Uh, Hegel, you mean Hegel from East, from uh, Kaliningrad. But, but if, you look at, if you look at the situation there, Germany after the Treaty of Versailles, you had the rise of Hitler, the war. And look, what happened was Stalin solved the problem. They expelled 15 million Germans from the old area, from Silesia, Pomeria, East Prussia. And now Germany is even accepting that the, this was in conformity of the Atlantic Charter because it was an occupied country until 1992.
Before that, it was an occupied country. They don't have occupation. When they had the reunification of Germany, technically, the Federal Republic of Germany was still under control of the Allies. The Allies still had the, had the final say. Yeah. And one of the conditions of the reunification and, and to get the Allies out and the Russians out was Germany recognized that uh, there were no expulsions of Germans, that there were Poles all the time, and that this was a false of the history, and they accepted it. So what I'm saying is, yeah. why, why don't we, what we do is, we move the borders of Germany to the Elbe River, which was the original proposal. And we take Mecklenburg and we make a Jewish state there. Because all of these <clears throat> overlapping populations you know, make the nation state obsolete and, and un unsustainable. So just, the nation state is the problem. But the problem that was we, invented we, by we, Hegel we, 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 in we, 1648. We deported, we deported. It's out, it's out of date, you know. What we need is a federation of various you know, but, national but, communities but, in the same country. But, but look, they, they expelled 15 million Germans on the east. They're no longer in refugee camps. They were integrated in West Germany. Problem solved. Yeah. So why don't we just ex just expel yes, but that all happened the Palestinians in, and the Jordanians and the Egyptians? That happened them? already in '48. Don't you know? The Nakba. There's two million Palestinians living in Jordan right now. Half the population Jordan, are Jordan, Palestinians. And Jordan, Jordan, and Jordan killed more Palestinians than when they had the war with Arafat in 1975. They killed uh, 75,000 Palestinians. Yeah, so, you know, and they them out. living in exile is no pl no solution because they'll be in conflict with the with the local government in any well, case. That's why guy. Egypt will not allow the Palestinians to be expelled from Gaza into the Sinai. And, and look at the Kuwaitis. The Kuwaitis, were, you know, they, they were expelled also from Kuwait because of the, the lack of loyalty when the Iraq war came. They expelled, uh, they expelled a half a million uh, Palestinians, so-called Palestinians, and, and rightly so. Rightly so. Well, if they could have been expelled to go back to Palestine, yes, but otherwise, you know, wh because where are they going to go? When Iraq, when Iraq was invaded, their duty was to fight the Iraqis to the last man. I mean, yes, it's true that the king of Kuwait was on a cruise uh, with like women having sex, but I mean, that's that's when you're a king, that's the way it works. You know, when you're a small person, the rules are different. But. Look, they expelled people. But there's still, there still five to seven million Palestinian refugees outside of Palestine, Israel. Where are they going to go? Where, where, what are we going to do with the Jews? Are we going to exterminate them? No, they stay there and they have their own national cultural autonomy. They were, when, when in the West Bank, when the West Bank was, uh, was seized, annexed by Jordan, they ethnically cleansed all the Jews. No. Anyway, anyway okay. I, 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 I'll be back next Sunday. What's your name? Ab Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. Weisfeld. Here, my card. Uh, I'm all over the, the internet? internet. Are you on the internet? Everywhere. I'll, I'll find out on the internet. It's okay. okay. You have to know this. Where's my cards? Uh, it's okay. Weisfeld, I can find that. With a Z. How old are you, sir? 75. So you retired. What, what I was you? born in 48, just after the... Where After did you the teach? war, did you teach in the university in Montreal? I I used to teach at York University in Toronto, but here in Quebec I haven't gotten any teaching for 36 years. Yeah. And political science, York. Yeah. So then you must have known Jack Layton then, because then he teach. I knew him in the NDP, but at York, you know, I worked with. Uh, did he teach at York? Jack Layton. Uh, he was a professor. Jack yeah. Layton. Yeah. You know that I think the University of Ottawa, maybe. You know that Jack Layton is from a uh, connected political family? If you look at uh, Jack Layton's father, yeah. he was a Mulroney cabinet minister. Oh, wow. And uh, do you know that his uh, his grandfather was a minister under Maurice Duplessis? What a family. What do you mean? <laughs> That's a right-wing family. You got it. But, but he, Layton so he knew it was all about, yeah. I don't know. Well, it's funny because his grandfather was a minister under, under Duplessis. He was a member of the uh, what do you call it, uh, Union Nationale. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, wow. Uh, and as far uh, Leighton, uh, I forgot his first name. He was a candidate in the for He was MP under Moroni. Ah. I don't say he was right wing as father, but uh, and he lived uh, to a longer age than his son because his son, I believe, Jack Leighton yeah. died at what sixty. Yeah. I met Jack Layton. He's a good man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he wasn't an ideologue, you know. He wasn't like he a was dogmatic a he person. Was a pragmatic he, NDP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was more to the right, actually, from the NDP if you look at it that way. Yeah, but you know, he was open. He wasn't, you know, a, a dog, dogmatic because person. Because Ed Broadbent, who God rest his soul, 